friends welcome back to my channel if you're new my name is Amanda so y'all I'm excited to share these crock pot soup recipes with y'all today this is actually a really special video it's in collaboration with several other channels Leanne from the Mennonite farmhouse is hosting a soup timber collab we're all making a bunch of soup recipes so I'm gonna have that playlist link below in my description box Leanne is also going to be hosting a giveaway on her channel on October 7th, so make sure you tune into her channel then so you can enter that giveaway. I'll have some details in my description box about that as well. But um, I'm excited to be a part of this club. I'm excited to be back today. So if y'all are new, um, welcome. I do all kinds of food content over here. And of course, if you're returning, I'm excited to have y'all back. And I can't wait to chat with y'all in the comments as well. But let's go ahead and get into these delicious soup recipes. I'm excited to share them with y'all. And we'll go ahead and get into the video. So we're going to get started on our cheeseburger soup. And this goes together really easily especially if you have ground beef already cooked. I've told y'all before that I love to cook my ground beef up in bulk and then keep it in the freezer and it's so handy for recipes because you can just microwave it or even toss in the little frozen block in the crock pot with like something like this however you want to do it. I think I did end up um, thawing this one in the microwave but you can do it either way. But I'm just getting some potatoes, some celery. I'm going to also chop some carrots onion all that get all that chopped up into uh, diced pieces the recipe does call for a cup of shredded carrots and I did just decide to dice mine because I didn't have any shredded and honestly I didn't want to actually like shred them so the, you know whatever you, you like best is fine sometimes I do think I prefer like diced pieces of carrots versus you know actually um, the shredded ones it kind of depends on the soup but We've also got some spices like basil, parsley, pepper. I think I put a little bit of garlic salt in this too. Um, and then, yeah, all that goes in there along with some chicken broth. And we're going to go and move this over to the crock pot and actually get it going on high. I'll, a lot of times I'll cook stuff on high, even if I just cook it for an hour or two on high. But this one I think I did cook all the way through on high. And you can do either high or low, whichever one works for you. But we're going to get all the vegetables cooked essentially and then kind of finish up the soup and make it all creamy and cheesy and all that good stuff. So now that the soup is finished, we're going to go ahead, um, or our veggies are cooked anyways, and we're going to go ahead and put our ground beef in there. And I did thaw that out in the microwave. Like I said, it's so handy to have that cooked ground beef in the freezer. Uh, it's definitely a huge time saver for me. And y'all let me know what your favorite soup is for the fall season. Fall is literally my favorite season. I'm so glad that it's kind of starting to cool down here. Is it starting to cool down where you live? Um, I mean, it's not like cool, cool, but it's like, you know, 70s. Even if it's high 70s, it's still much better than like, you know, 90s or something. So I definitely love fall so much. Now we're just going to go ahead and melt some butter in a skillet. And we're going to add some flour in there and just kind of cook that for a minute. Basically, um, I thought it was going to be kind of a thicker paste, but it wasn't. I might have added just a little bit more flour, um, you know, like in hindsight. But I think I measured it correctly. Uh, and maybe that's just the way it was meant to be, not to get too thick. But I've got two cups of milk going in here as well. And I just let that get all warm and kind of thicken a little bit. It never like thickened a lot. Uh, so that's why I said you might want to add just a tiny bit more flour But I mean honestly this was you know, this was fine like there was it didn't have to be thicker It was pretty pretty good the way it was so it's just up to you whether you want to make it a little bit thicker or not And I'm just going to get that mixed together in there well and now we're going to add in our cheese now The recipe says that you can use Velveeta um, Or you can use like shredded. I didn't have any block cheese to shred because I know that's like the best, you know, a lot of times for melting. But I use this like Sargento. They're kind of like natural shreds. I can't remember what it's called. But that one actually worked really well. I didn't feel any graininess from the cheese or anything like that. And it melted really well too. And we're just going to go ahead and put the lid back on it and let it cook for about another 30 minutes. You probably could eat it, you know, just fine like right then i just wanted to make sure the cheese was completely melted and the recipe i think said to you know like let it cook a little longer so that's what i did but this turned out really creamy 
I, I was a little concerned when that, that milk and flour mixture didn't thicken up too much. But it was a good creaminess. Um, definitely if you wanted it a little thicker, you probably could just add a little more flour. And that would probably help thicken it up more. But I just topped mine with some shredded cheese and a couple pickle slices because it is cheeseburger soup. So I thought that would go with it perfectly. And um, yeah, this was really good. Definitely recommend. So now we're going to get started on Dolly Parton's stone soup. And I've actually already got all my stuff chopped. We're just going to dump in some chopped cabbage here and some onions along with some potatoes. I've also got some turnips and some carrots. I've actually never cooked turnips before. I've had turnip greens, but not turnips. So I was kind of curious to see what this would taste like because I wasn't really sure what to expect. But it's got, um, I also did petite diced tomatoes and then I've got two boxes of the chicken broth. Um, this also calls for a ham hock to be put in it. I added some garlic salt and some fresh cracked pepper. After eating it, I probably would add a few other spices. I'm not really sure what yet. I'd like to play with that a little bit. But this recipe was on the Hallmark Channel um, website. And so, uh, you know, and it was a Dolly Parton recipe. And I thought it would be kind of fun to do that one. Um, I'm also adding in some garlic here too, by the way. But but yeah, it was. Um, this was really like, you know, good flavor from the ham hock that goes in it. Uh, I just think I would add some different spices too, but I'm just not sure what yet. Uh, but it was a very good soup and really kind of light. It, even though you have like the fattiness obviously from the ham hock, it still was like a light soup because like, you know, it's more of a brothy soup. So it's not like a creamy soup. And so, um, yeah, it was, it was really tasty. And so basically you're just going to cook this until all the vegetables are tender and the ham hock is like falling apart. This ham hock in particular did not have a whole lot of meat off on it. So I did go ahead and take it out and pull it out and put what little meat was on it back in the pot. But it was a very small amount of meat. So I'm, I guess that just varies. I don't use ham hocks a lot, but um, I guess that just kind of varies like, you know, depending on each one and stuff. But, um, but we actually ended up eating this with some crusty bread. Our Sam's got a bakery department and like it hadn't had one and so um we actually bought some french baguettes from sam's and they were really good if y'all haven't tried them and your sam's has a bakery i highly recommend it it was really tasty uh but yeah this soup was really good love the cabbage in it too so now we've got corn chowder and i definitely love a good corn chowder we're going to go ahead and cut up our veggies for this which is going to be some onions and celery we're also going to put some or chop some potatoes and everything i don't know if any of y'all have ever been to pigeon forge gatlinburg severeville area but there is a restaurant there called the old meal and if you've never been there oh my goodness you really should try it it is the best restaurant it's so good my favorite thing to get there is the turkey and dressing but they serve like you get like a little cup of corn chowder with your meal and then also corn fritters and those are the best things ever both those combinations together and so i need to find like a copycat recipe or something and try that and see if it turns out i'm sure it won't taste exactly the same but it might come close so i thought it'd be fun to try a corn chowder recipe and see how that kind of turns out so i'm glad i tried this one this is a really good recipe i do think next time i would want to try to blend some of the like the soup it did say that was optional and um at first i thought oh it seems creamy enough but part of me thinks that the like having some of the more creamy texture from like the the corn being blended or something might be interesting too so i've just got some garlic that i added in there some onion salt and just some all-purpose seasoning the recipe didn't call for that but i went ahead and added those things the recipe also calls for like bacon i did not do bacon on this one um, you can definitely add that if you want to. But we're just going to add in our corn. It's two bags of the 12 ounce frozen corn. And then some chicken broth. And essentially you're just going to cook everything for a few hours. Depends on you know whether you're going for high or low. And then um, we'll be ready to kind of like finish it and make it all good and creamy. And this actually called for half and half or heavy cream. So it's up to you whichever one you know you'd prefer to use i actually use kind of a mixture of both um and that worked just fine it thickened it you know but you also mix that with cornstarch and of course 
cornstarch is always you know really good at helping like thicken stuff like that um so yeah that really worked well for thickening it up but i do think i want to try blending some of the soup and seeing how that turns out next time i'm curious if that gives more of a texture closer to that soup from the old meal but i'm not sure i don't i don't know i'd have to try it and see and y'all let me just remind you about leanne's channel the midnight farmhouse make sure you go over and check her channel out and make sure you check out the entire playlist because if you love soups as much as like we do then you'll definitely want to check out everybody's channels and the recipes everybody's cooking up so many delicious things so definitely make sure you check that out i'll have everything linked in my description box below and don't forget that leanne is doing that giveaway on october 7th um but yeah i'm definitely appreciative of participating in this collab i'm sorry i've been absent for a little bit i'm trying my best to get more regular in posting and everything and that's my goal i'm really going to work on that so because i really do enjoy being over here on youtube chatting with y'all and all that good stuff in the comments and everything but i did go ahead and add some garlic salt to this because i feel like it needed a little something else and so um i feel like that's kind of my go-to seasoning a lot of times because it's a little less sodium than um actual just regular salt and so i can use a little bit of that and it kind of you know put some flavor in there but yeah you can see this is really good and creamy very tasty uh, definitely recommend this recipe as well so i hope y'all have enjoyed this video if you have i'd appreciate if you give it a thumbs up thank y'all so much for joining me today and i hope you have a blessed day wherever you are i'll see you in the next one